Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course, and as you can see from the title of this video, um, I will be giving commentary on Carlos speaking, verbally speaking out loud about Kiki's passing. I know that he did make an IG story post. I did make a video about that. And um, he did speak about her passing as well as the most recent episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville during his Messy Monday show with Dr. Heavenly. So before I get into these sound bites, of course, you know what I'm going to ask, right? I'm going to ask for you all to please hit the like button on this video. When you hit either one of those, the like or dislike button, then YouTube knows that, you know, it could generate an opinion, a passion, some sort of feeling inside. So YouTube will recommend this video to more people who want to experience a feeling themselves after watching a video surrounding love and marriage Huntsville. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to show style and spirit. I would definitely love to have you as one of the show stoppers. And everything that I'm saying in this video is alleged and just my opinion. And the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on these sound bites are allowed for criticism. All right, so StreamYard would not let me be great it is not processing any like Google slideshows. So I had this visual on a Google slideshow like I normally do for my pre-recorded videos and StreamYard is not adding them to the um, videos to the studio, I should say. And they had a message because I've been exiting out of them, going back in, creating new stream yards, and they had a message at the top saying, we know about this issue. So it's widespread, I guess, and they have to figure it out. So I had to be innovative. I had to text the visual to myself so that I could send it to my Instagram, and then I'm sharing my screen that way because I love it if I can give you all some sort of visual that relates to the content that I'm giving commentary on. So here we go. Um, of course, they recap the latest episode. They did, however, open up with a moment of silence for Kiki. And then Carlos, he wanted to talk about his feelings about her passing, as well as, you know, him feeling like people, they are still mean even after someone's earthly life has ended. I want to say this, really. Um, I want to say this, you know, rest in peace, Kiki Jabbar. A lot of people have been asking um, how I've been doing. You reach out to me. A lot of people reach out to me, Quad. Um, a lot of my friends, I want to say thank you for that. It Listen, grief is something that everyone handles differently. And what a tremendous loss. So prayers to the Jabbar family, prayers to the extended family. Um, it's just, it was shocking. It was something that just was, was super unexpected. And, you know, it took, a, it took a long time to process. So thank you for all who, who reached out to me. Um, and listen, for people who like to push others to instantly make a comment or a video you guys need to respect people's boundaries when it comes to dealing with grief everyone handles grief differently i did speak out on it on my social media heavily on fourth of july plenty of days to process it um and I'll, I'll keep it at that you know the family asked to respect the privacy and that's exactly what i'm doing and i implore other people to do the same respect the privacy of the family in which they want to and leave people alone in the comments and of all times to hold off on your hate tweets and your hateful comments you can, you can start doing that tomorrow but to to sit up there and use this opportunity to continue to spew hate is very disgusting and it just goes to show you that we live in a world where people do not take a day off from being mean to others. And that's the sad part. And that's why I'm grateful that I don't read comments. I'm grateful that I'm on Twitter. I only post on Twitter, you know, to promote our stuff um, heavily and then the shows. But it was it was, it was was something that <clears throat> was sad. But um, thank you for acknowledging her. 
Yeah, man, that's that's real sad, and and um, like we praying for everybody involved. Yeah, we praying. So I guess you know we can move on and try to yeah. Let's move. Let, let, let's talk about. Okay, so um, Carlos spoke out. He said that he was shocked, and it was a tremendous loss. Um, he said that you know he made an IG post. He wanted to respect the family's wishes to you know not really say much anything that could trigger them or hurt them and um he said that people were still spewing um meanness on twitter i know when i heard the unfortunate news and being very shocked when i went on twitter i just saw um mr tyler from love and marriage dc jamie tyler he gave his condolences and um you know like a, other reality tv stars and i know that there were some people there were some people on twitter who they instantly thought of kiki palmer and then once they would read people's tweets and realize that it wasn't about kiki they would say something smart or say something mean once they realized that it was not kiki palmer you know so i don't know if he's referring to that because I feel like that was what I saw on Twitter. I don't feel like anyone said any mean things about Kiki Jabbar herself. You know, we were all shocked about her passing. So when we learned the news, I think everyone just gave their condolences, you know, but the, as far as Twitter goes, the only negative comments I saw were from the Kiki Palmer fans who they instantly thought of her. And once they realized that it was not Kiki Palmer, you know, they, they had some things to say that they could have just, you know, kept to themselves. And um, after that soundbite that I played, Dr. Heavenly suggested that they just move on with the commentary on the episode. And she said, because if you dwell on things, it can get you stuck. So she says she chooses not to dwell on things so that she does not get stuck, I guess, like in a rut or some sort of negative place. And then after that, uh, Carlos had this to say in response to Dr. Heavenly talking about not dwelling on things in order to not be stuck. There's no right or wrong way to handle grief. And I... I, I guess I gave too many people the benefit of the doubt, and, and, and let's be clear, it is an overwhelmingly positive response, but I really thought to myself, because again, I don't read the comments, and my social media manager was like, yeah, people really want you to comment and make a, make a statement. I did make a statement. Did you guys want me to, to instantly make it about me and, and to talk about it when the family asked for respect? I really thought the mean people would take the day off from their hate and just and just chill out for a while but nonetheless nonetheless um let's get into love and marriage huns but because i mean have you are clearly okay so he actually said that um his social media manager said the people really want you to make a statement and he said i did i made an ig post you know what more do people want he also mentioned that, you know, people need to respect boundaries. And I definitely understand that you cannot predict or dictate how someone expresses their condolences um, or, or their grief. Um, I, I just I'm just glad that he did make the IG post because sometimes the silence, it can be read the wrong way as well. But he did make the IG post about being in shock and it being a loss. And what matters most is, you know, is saying prayers and thinking positive thoughts for Amin and his children, you know, giving them your condolences, letting them know that you care. And, you know, praying is done in secret, making donations, sending cash apps is done in secret. And what's done in secret, you know, it, it gets rewarded openly. And the reward could be just seeing that other person, you know, be blessed or feel better or be able to make it, you know, another day without their loved one. So he did, he did mention Kiki. And again, they did have a moment of silence for her. Now, um, throughout their Messy Monday recap, uh, Dr. Heavenly definitely dragged Marquez, who is Trisha's husband, for leaving his family. She said that, you know, 
him thinking that he's a dad and he should be respected simply because he conceived the children with Trisha. They conceived those kids, you know, during times of making love. Like she says, that ain't ish, you know, for him to think that he's a dad and he's worthy of something. She was very fired up about the Trisha and Marquez storyline, and they talked about that for a very long time. And then uh, when it came to Nell Fletcher and her family, Dr. Heavenly agreed with Nell. Dr. Heavenly feels like if she gives money to adult kids, if she is providing anything, then you are to listen to me and no, I don't have to hear you out. No, I don't have to stop interrupting you because I give you money. And Dr. Heavenly used her own kids as an example. She talked about one of her sons being in private school, then going away to college. She said if he had to finance his entire education, he would easily be in debt by a million dollars. So she was basically saying, you know, me and Dr. Damon, we paid for that. But you two also decided to have children. You made the choice to conceive those kids. You made the choice to put them in private school, which was a great choice. And then you made the choice to pay for their education out of pocket. I think that that was another great choice as a parent who decided to have kids. But um, never once in her commentary, she did not say, you know, um, I'm convinced that Nell's kids, they always ask for money on the rent and things of uh, that nature because she has not taught them financial responsibility. She didn't say anything like that. She was just like, I agree with Nell. If I give you money, you need to listen to me and I don't have to listen to you. So, you know, it was very like old school, very much giving so growing up while black. And it is so ironic. Um, I saw a post by the actress Viola Davis and she had a reel growing up while black. And I believe I shared it on my Instagram stories. But yeah, definitely Dr. Heavenly is on Nell's side. But what did you all think about Carlos's commentary? Um, I feel like, because a, a lot of people felt like he may have asked Funky Dineva to give his commentary on the situation. So I feel like his, his friend, I assume that their friends, Funky Dineva, definitely fits into that category of mean people whom he was speaking on. And um, again, what I saw on Twitter, not saying that I saw every single tweet relating to it, but the only negative tweets that I saw were from Kiki Palmer fans who wanted to say something smart once they realized that it was not about her. But I thank you all so much for checking out this video. <clears throat> After I saw StreamYard was acting up, I actually went to the park and did a 40 minute walk before it got dark. Then um, I came right back home, StreamYard was still acting up, but I think the walk helped me to like clear out my thoughts to think of a way to still come up with the visual. But I'm always relieved when Mondays are over, the Monday workday. I'm just like, okay, now I can breathe. Tomorrow will be a terrific Tuesday. Remember, if there's anything that you can do tonight to set yourself up for a smooth Tuesday morning, do it. <clears throat> Whether it's laying out your clothes tonight, packing your lunch, if you eat over, overnight oats, you preparing that tonight, let's just knock it out. Whatever you can do to position yourself to have a smooth Tuesday morning so that you're not rushing and you're not feeling intense right at the start of your day, definitely do it. Say your affirmations in the mirror and journal and or pray to get your thoughts out of your head and somewhere else. And I will talk with you all very soon. Bye.